Hey, what's up folks, how are you getting on? I hope you're doing pretty well. And today we are going to talk about the latest update of Octofish, namely about streaming modder, or as I call it. Don't mind the cat, the cat is just a small project of mine I'm working on lately. And I hope it will make this video a little bit less boring. So, streaming modder, why do you even need this? As you might know, running the bot and the game on the same PC might get you into trouble, you know what I mean. And it's not very safe. So that's why you need to run the board on one PC and the game on the other. Alright, let me explain how it all works. Let's say we have a laptop here where a game runs. And then we have a main PC where a board runs. Then we connect to HDMI output, HDMI capture device, and connect it to USB port of our main PC. So that our bot, which is running on our main PC, can analyze the data from the screen of this laptop, right? Then the bot does its magic and sends signal via Wi-Fi to Raspberry Pico V device, which is connected to Wi-Fi as well. This Raspberry Pico V device is also connected via USB to our laptop. And the laptop can tell the difference between the real keyboard and mouse and this Raspberry Pico V device, which serves as keyboard and mouse device. It simulates inputs of keyboard, of real keyboard, or real mouse. So that's all. That's basically all. The data is sent via HDMI to main PC. The bot checks all the data, does its magic, then it sends signal to Raspberry Pico V device, which in turn simulates mouse and keyboard. Simple as that. All right, and now let's check what devices do you need exactly and where to buy them. Let's open our browser. And here we've got Amazon. You just write HDMI capture and have a list of all these devices. The only thing, I'm not sure which one is better, which one is worse. The only thing I want to mention is that you need USB 3.0. I think it will work much better than with USB 2.0, right? You can also buy it on Chinese markets as I did. I tested the board with one of these and it, it works well. Yeah, the prices here are different as well. I bought the one for 10 bucks. Not this one, another one, I'm, uh, I don't remember which one already, but but I think they are, mostly they are all the same. The same goes for Raspberry Pico V device. You just write Raspberry Pico V, and here you've got a list. And on Chinese marketers as well. The price here is funny. So th that's all. You just find one, buy HDMI capture device, and then you buy a Raspberry Pico V device. These two things. So after you bought everything, you connect your HDMI capture device, as I explained previously, and then you go to the advanced settings of the board. Here you check this box and find your device in this list. You should choose it and, well, you press OK button. Now that you've connected your HDMI capture device, you can test it by pressing Fishing Zone button. It will open and show you the screen of your computer. It, well, it works exactly as it as after Fish works with when it is installed on well on the same computer as the game. Now, if HDMI capture device works well and everything cool, we need to configure a Pico V device. First, you need to navigate to circuitpython.org, click Downloads, choose your PicoV device, and download this file. After that, you press this button on your PicoV device and connect it to your computer without releasing it. When you hear this sound, it will open as, as a disk, as a flash drive, right? And you drop the file you downloaded just to the root of, of that disk. If you do this, the device will disconnect and connect again. 
This way you install circuit Python on it. And after it reconnects, it will look like this. Circuit PI will be the name will be like this. Okay. All right. So with Afterfish, there'll come some files that you need to drop just right in the root of the circuit PI disk. Namely, it will be a code file and lib folder. You replace them and then you open the code file with Notepad or whatever text editor you like. Here we've got some configuration. First, what is most important is the name of your Wi-Fi. You put it right here, just between the quotes, and password to it. Okay? Then we've got an IP configuration. So, in most cases, it should work for you as well, this default one. But if you've got some different, or you need some different settings, you change them right here. I will not cover it in this video. If, you, if you're not sure, you just... Just Google it. It's pretty easy stuff. I'm sure you will manage. All right. So after we change configuration of our Pico V device, we disconnect it from our like, main computer and connect it to the computer where the game will be running. Okay. So in our case, it is a laptop. After we do this, we go to the advanced settings. And here we've got Raspberry Pico V IP section. And we should put the same IP we configured for our Pico V device. In our case, it's the default one. And then we press connect button. Success. So the device is connected to the Wi-Fi and everything should work. All right, then we press OK button. And that's all. Basically, right now you can use the bot while running it on one PC and the game on the other. 